So in our previous video, we left off on this idea of production efficiency, and we noticed how a plant is able to have a greater production efficiency, let's say, because of this greater secondary production that it provides for its consumer. The one who consumes gets the secondary production. That's why it's called secondary. It's not primary production because it's not the first organism gaining out of it. It's the second organism, the consumer gaining from the leaf, and it also has to utilize the leaf's energy, the 200 joules, um, in the 60 seven versus 100 scenario over here. We notice birds and mammals and fish all have different ideas based on their thermic capabilities, their endothermic or ectothermic characteristics. We'll conclude the idea of energy transfer by looking at the next statement, which says the following. Only chemical energy, so this is a big statement here, only chemical energy stored by herbivores Again, those are our primary consumers, the first individuals who eat the plants. As biomass only, chemical energy stored by herbivores as biomass or production of offspring available for secondary consumers available for our secondary consumers. Not our primary, but our secondary. Only chemical energy stored by herbivores is biomass or production of offspring available for secondary consumers. So the secondary consumers can only take whatever is stored by the herbivores or the offspring that come as a result of those herbivores. That's essentially biomass as well, the offspring that eventually results based off of a healthy, viable uh, individual. So if you have a healthy, viable individual, you'll have a nice offspring that a secondary consumer can possibly come in and consume or they can consume the actual biomass from the organism uh, itself because they store chemical energy within themselves. So this is a basic idea of energy transfer. Finally, last thing to understand here is the idea of trophic efficiency. Again, this is the rule of 10 showing itself up again and again and again in ecosystem ecology, in community ecology, even in population ecology. It's a big ecological rule that's important to understand. Basically, when we look at trophic efficiency, we have to understand that the percent of production um, that's transferred. Now, why are we using this term transferred? First law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred or converted to other forms. The percent production transferred from one level to the next. Again, look at our topic, look at our title of our flowchart. It is energy transfer between trophic levels. We are going from one level to the next. We are going between trophic levels, and we're going to look at the percent production, just like we did here at this trophic efficiency level. Again, a big idea in ecology is that there is always, always, always less than there's going to be always uh, always in this transfer of energy less than potential or production efficiency. Uh, what we mean by this, this always less than production efficiency, why is trophic efficiency always less than production efficiency? That's because not all organisms matter at lower level is consumed. So let's reread this. Why is trophic efficiency always less than pr production efficiency? Well, that's because not all of the organism that's being consumed, its matter, its biomass at the lower level is consumed. Well, why is that? Why don't we get a 100% consumption and utilization of this lower level organism? Well, that's because only 10% of that organism, only 10% of this energy, of this matter, is going to go to the next level. This is our rule of 10 in a nutshell. 90% of this energy, 90% of this organism, 90%, um, let's say, is lost. And that's usually lost to the environment as heat, as waste, as whatever. And that's going to simply be a, a rule because this actually limits the, uh, the reason why we see this law of 10 is because it limits the abundance of top 
level top level carnivores. The reason why we don't have a bunch of carnivores running around all over the place eating everything in sight is because energy gets less and less and less as you move up. Energy follows what we call the pyramid, a specific pyramid of net production. Remember this percentage that's transferred, this idea right here from one level to the next? It follows a pyramid scheme. And that pyramid scheme is the following. Those at the bottom, let's say, have 1,000 joules of energy available for those above. But because of the rule of 10, because only 10% will be transferred to the next level, they will only be able to utilize 100 joules of the 1,000 that they consumed. Let's say these are our primary consumers, these are our primary producers. Our secondary consumers will then will also follow the rule of 10. I'm just dividing by 10 as I keep on moving up, all the way up until the point we get to the very top of the pyramid where this consumer will only be the one consumer here. There will be a thousand plants for every thousand plants. Let's say there are only 100 primary consumers. For every 100 primary consumers, there are only 10 secondary consumers. And for every 10 secondary consumers, there's only one tertiary consumer. What are we doing right here? We're limiting the abundance. Look at this one right here limiting the abundance of top-level carnivores. There's only one. There's only one chance here. This is because of this trophic efficiency, this rule of 10 that we see as we move up or down, whichever way you want to look at this pyramid of net production. The more you go up, the less energy you have available because that's just how energy works on the trophic scale, on the ecosystem scale. So overall, through this energy transfer between trophic levels, we've established the idea of secondary production. The food that consumers eat has its own energy within it, and however much of that energy we can keep for ourselves will be considered our growth and assimilation, secondary production. There will also be other concepts like cell respiration and waste to keep in mind, and those will be part of our overall production efficiency equation to give us our different values that we see based off of lifestyle, based off of ability, based off of potential energy as a whole. And then we finally establish this pyramid scheme level that we have of trophic efficiency.